Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the new upcoming character Kinichi is how they pronounce it I believe and hopefully help you figure out if he fits your playstyle and team composition so ultimately if this character is worth your wishes. First of all, we are moving on to Netland characters and kind of similar to the Arkham mechanic in Fontaine, we will get something new called Night Soul, which all of the Netland characters have in common. It's a special state which they can enter when using their skills and during that time it generates and or consumes Night Soul points to either determine the duration of this effect or perform special actions. There's also a brand new mechanic called Night Soul Bursts. And it seems to be an effect that will just trigger when Netland characters deal Night Soul aligned damage. And it scales with the amount of Netland characters in your party, meaning it can happen more often the more characters you have from Netland in your party. And these new characters all seem to share similar passive skills as well, which directly relate to Night Soul Bursts. But they also have a fourth passive that is basically just there to make exploration and Netland easier with getting benefits for their own personal movement skills. And lastly, one very important thing I unfortunately couldn't confirm so far is if the Night Soul effect ends when the character leaves the field. As of right now, I would assume it does not end simply because of the wording on the new artifact set. Now to finally get into your skills, as most of the time, the normal attacks are very standard, so let's move on to the elemental skill. It offers a kind of similar movement as Jean Yun with the same cooldown reduction while out of combat, and in combat, pressing the elemental skill makes Kinichi grapple onto a target and enter Night Soul state for 10 seconds while continuously generating Night Soul points. Now, in his uh, Night Soul state, normal attacks are transformed into loop shots, dealing Night Soul aligned Dendro elemental skill damage, and they generate extra Night Soul points when hitting a target. When the maximum is generated, he then can use his elemental skill to shoot a cannon to deal significant damage, and he can also aim it freely by holding down the button. And during this Night Soul state, he will also create blind spots, which will generate extra Night Soul points once Kinshi exploits them. That's kind of a lot, so to quickly summarize, use normal attacks to move towards blind spots, and whenever the Night Soul points are full, press the elemental skill to shoot his cannon. That's basically it. As for the burst skill, it's summoning a dragon that attacks nearby enemies with Night Soul aligned dendro damage. Again, pretty simple. As for passives, the first one, he has two non-combat related skills, mainly relating to movement in Latlan and displaying local specialties on the minimap. The second one generates extra Night Soul points if Kinshi's elemental skill hits enemies that are burning or affected by Burgeon. And the last one, the usual Night Soul burst synergy, when other characters trigger it, Kinshi gains up to two stacks increasing the damage of his next cannon shots. This character seems very unique to me, again Navia feels like the closest comparison as in building a resource and then using it on the elemental skill to deal significant damage. He also gets fueled by elemental reactions to a certain degree, but unlike Navia he isn't completely reliant on them, so I assume he can work just fine without playing into his passive skill. Especially the burst skill seems to do very respectable damage with very good uptime, so Quicken seems to be an actually very strong option for this character, so gaining one more passive skill for using arguably weaker reactions seems Seems like a good trade off to me. For him it probably comes down to a choice between using his cannon more often with burning and burgeon or to just straight up deal more damage with quicken. Also by the way being hooked onto an enemy and circling around them with the normal attacks looks like a lot of fun, again it's a very unique playstyle so even if he were to be a little bit more niche in terms of teams I think that alone makes him interesting. Though while in Night Soul mode, these normal attacks are considered elemental skill damage, so one concern I have is if that means he loses synergy with characters like Jing Shou who require normal attacks. If that is the case, it could make playing something like Burgeon a little bit more complicated, which would kill some of the variety or even more of it I should say, but honestly, I can't imagine that being the case. And lastly, I already made a little bit of a bold prediction in my Mualani video, and in case you haven't seen that, let me just quickly repeat it here. Mualani seems to work very well with the Vaporize, Kinchi and his weapon also synergize with Pyro, and both characters have passive skills that create synergy with other characters' Night Soul Burst. To me, it seems like we have a lot of clues pointing towards the Pyro Archon being a sub-DPS designed to enable these characters, and potentially all of the new ones. Maybe they want her to be this unifying factor for all the different tribes of Netland, even in terms of gameplay. But again, it's just speculation on my part. 
again. <laughs> the build is definitely quite standard with the usual crit crit damage and in his case dendro damage bonus and attack. As for Elemental Mastery, if you play his usual burning and burgeon comps, I think you can pretty much ignore it. Otherwise, if you go for quicken, I think it's very nice to have like 2 to 300 to have extra spread damage. As for energy recharge, his burst is quite expensive, but it's very good in my opinion, so it's definitely worth pressing. So I'd say around 160 to 180 is probably uh, enough. I'm definitely on the higher side, I wouldn't go too high to um, sacrifice damage stats. As for weapons, I think there are some very nice free um, Forza options. I think this event weapon, if you have it, is pretty much exactly what he needs. Otherwise, if you play Quicken, the Maid Flower can also be very good, but if you miss these, then of course the Prototype Akia can be a nice crafting weapon. Just a huge stat stick, basically. And then, for artifacts, um, for main stats, Definitely attack percentage here, dendro damage bonus in this lot, and crit crit damage in the last one. And of course, the new set will be the best. Until then though, um, I just go with a split set with just some generous stats or elemental skill damage. As for teams, I think most people would consider Kinichi as a main DPS and prefer to play him as such, so that's what I'm gonna focus on. But he is kind of similar to Ayato in the sense that you can choose to play him as a sub DPS since his burst skill has good off-field damage and uptime. So especially if you don't have a character like Nahida for example, you're kind of running out of options quickly. So if you can play someone like Fischl just for her bird, then I guess you can also play someone like Kinichi just for his dragon, is what I'm getting at. As for Quicken, by the way, I won't go into too much detail and focus more on his like um, burning and burgeon teams but you just basically want to have any electro dps to enable the quicken and then probably another dendro character to enable the deep board memory set to get the resistance shred because it's a lot of extra damage especially if you play double dps dendro for the spread damage and now to show some sample teams that actually synergize well with Kinichi's passive skills, speaking of Burning and Burgeon. And this first Melt Burn team is probably already my favorite because it's super free to play friendly, only 4 star characters are needed. And there's a lot of cross synergy here. First of all, they are all attack scaling characters, so the pyro resonance is already really nice. And of course, Zhang Ling and Rosaria do a lot of off field damage with their burst skills, and they both snapshot, so Bennett adds a lot of extra damage here. Zhang Ling is also very energy hungry, so the extra pyro particles obviously help out a lot. And then, of course, these two characters trigger the burning, which makes it really consistent for Rosaria to melt off of it for a lot of extra damage while also providing the extra crit rate. So, again, a lot of extra cross synergy here. And if we talk about burning, then obviously a character like Emily comes to mind. She does very respectable damage, but of course a Rosario constantly will melt is probably outperforming her. But this team is just easier. Emily just doesn't snapshot. You just press her skills, especially if you drop Bandit and pick someone like Zhongli for the res resistance shred or someone like Jean for the pyro resistance shred. It's just an easy and comfy team to play in my mind. I can't really say too much about this team, if it will be good or not. First of all, I don't even know if this new character can be played as a sub DPS, but with this we have Geo Resonance and she can trigger Night Soul Burst, which feeds into Kinichi's second passive skill, so this might be actually a lot of extra damage for his elemental skill. And moving on to Burgeon, Furina, of course, great character, we don't need to talk about it. And then Baiju, a nice option for Dendro Resonance, this time it actually does something because Burgeon is stronger. And then, of course, he also provides extra benefits from his passive skill, and he has a lot of healing to feed into Furina. Citrine, this time Hydro Resonance, obviously nice because Furina does a lot of damage herself, and her elemental skill damage buff is really nice for um, Kinichi. And then if we just want more Hydra application to pop more Dendro pots, then of course someone like Kokomi might be pretty nice as well. And assuming Kinichi's normal attacks do actually trigger follow-up attacks from Jingzhou or Toma for example, then we can go for a high elemental mastery Burgeon team with a Dendro resonance here and a very high elemental mastery Toma. Alternatively, if you don't have Nahida, you can even pick up something like Sucrose for the elemental mastery buffs. And at the end, I at least wanted to mention Kazuo and Dia once. I really wouldn't consider them great synergy. Of course, Kazuo doesn't really do anything for Kinichi, but if you have another Pyro sub DPS, then you can buff Pyro damage, I guess. And Dia can be used as a replacement for Zhangling and Burning teams. She does way less damage, but if you're really against playing Zhangling, I guess she is an option. And for Burgeon, she is quite awkward. I wouldn't really recommend her for that. Alright, we made it to the end. I hope this was somewhat helpful to figure out if this character appeals to you. I will get him and try him out, so stay tuned for that. Until then, have fun and bye bye.